It's so good to be here again in your midst today. Thank you for letting me be in your space. I really appreciate that. So today, I promise to be here to the end of this. I hope you will be too. Please don't leave me. But before we go and have an amazing time in God's presence, you know, we we'll have to ask God and pray to him and worship him also. So we do pray with me. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to congregate via this media. We ask that your presence be made available and your power and your glory come upon us afresh. We give you praise because the word is the Lord made for us today. The worship is the Lord made for our experience today. Every single detail will minister to us personally. Thank you, our Father. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. All right, don't go anywhere. Like I said, I'll be here at the end. See you later. Yeah.
Our nugget for this month is on discipline. Be reminded that if you want to be an outstanding personality in your generation, you need discipline. Every great man or woman in all professions has a history of a disciplined life. For this week, we are looking at the topic how to improve your self-discipline and live a disciplined life. This is part one. One, believe God and his word and believe in yourself. Two, I'm sure you have self-discipline in certain areas and lack them in some areas. Inculcate the discipline you have in those areas to the areas you lack them. Three, Overcome procrastination and laziness with prompt and necessary actions. Four, prioritize your life and stick to plans which you outline. Don't live by default. Five, increase and harden your resolve to overcome harmful habits and distractions. Six, control automatic anger and resentful reactions by gaining self-mastery and self-control. You achieve this by keeping silence or ignoring an offense. Seven, become more decisive and assertive and literally hate the life of indiscipline. Eight, persevere with anything you do, reach your goals, and achieve your dreams. You can download your quiet time and go through everything that is in it. I trust you can live a disciplined life. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hello royalties, great to have you again here for the word and today we'll be discussing the potential for greatness in the kingdom. Yes, everyone has that something in them that can grow to really become huge and famous. And we can find this in the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast. Have you ever taken part in one of those science experiments where you plant one or two seeds of corn or beans and a few weeks later you have a full grown plant? Some of us have always wondered how this change from a tiny seed to a huge plant happens. I would say a pure miracle of nature from God. And amazingly, God replicates this same kind of miracle in his kingdom. Our parables for today focus on the potential for growth and increase that usually lie hidden in some things which look deceptively small. One look at the mustard seed and it's so hard to imagine that an entire plant can come from it. Although it's one of the smallest seeds in the world, a mustard seed is able to grow rapidly to produce a tree that can extend up to 10 or 15 feet. With a record of very small beginnings, the mustard seed stands as an example of the God-given potential of his creation to grow to great heights from something very small and provide shelter for birds and other animals. Similarly, the potential for multiplication can also be seen when bakers use agents like yeast to make the bread dough rise about five times its original size. Let's read about these parables in our text, Matthew 13, verses 31 to 33. Matthew chapter 13, 31 to 33. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Another parable he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, 
which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. From these parables, it is easy to underrate or totally ignore the mustard seed and yeast because of their very small sizes. They usually do not look as though they can bring about or undergo much change, but they actually do. Jesus used the ability of this tiny mustard seed to grow into a great plant and the capacity that the yeast possesses to increase dough to illustrate his might and power that he has invested in you, his children, who are part of his kingdom. Now what can we learn from this parable? One of the lessons we learned is that we should value small beginnings. Just like the mustard seed starts off small, so also the kingdom of God begins in a small way. Think about what happened over 2,000 years ago. One man, Jesus, moved to 11 disciples, and then 70 apostles, and kept growing into millions of believers all over the world. Just as the small size of the seed doesn't quite look like the plant it's going to become, the same way the small and humble beginnings of Jesus' ministry sometimes camouflage the greatness of the people, you and I, in the kingdom. So you know, no matter where you're starting from, no matter how you feel that it looks quite small and you're not sure where you're going, you do have a great future, even though it starts with a small beginning. Another point to look at and a lesson learned from these parables is that we should avoid discouragement from small beginnings. Yes, sometimes you may begin to feel discouraged when it seems like you've worked so hard to do something and it looks small and insignificant. It might be talking to your friends about Christ and they don't even seem to budge or listen to you. Or it could be an exam that you've prepared so hard for, but you didn't quite get the grades you had hoped for. You know what? Keep trusting in God. Don't give up and don't be discouraged. What you need to do is to hold on to his words to avoid discouragement in any form. If you read Psalm 31, verse 24, you can see more on this. A third lesson learned from this parable is that God's kingdom is a change agent. When we use the story of the yeast which turns the flour into dough and makes it rise, Jesus teaches that although the kingdom of God seems like a relatively small living thing when you compare the people that are actually believers and the people in the world who may not be believers, you must note that as small as it seems, it brings about a lot of positive change. You see, the kingdom of God consists of believers like you, children of God, just like you. Once you've given your life to Christ, you've initiated the kingdom of God and you continue to help people to transform and cause so much positive change all around you and you never stop. Our last lesson is a really amazing one and I really want you to put it to heart. It is greatness is in your DNA as a child of God. You are part of God's kingdom and he has put a lot of great potential within you. You want to know more about this? Read through Ephesians 1 verses 18 to 22 and you see all the great things God has planned and deposited in you. Truth is right now, you may be feeling insignificant in the pattern of things, but just like the mustard seed and the yeast, you have inbuilt God-given potential to become a very great and influential part of his kingdom. What you need to do is focus on his word and make sure you are growing every single day and you see that greatness come up within you. We'll look at our memory verse for today and it has a lot to do with not looking down on our small beginnings because they are just building us up for a greater future. From Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10a, it says, Do not despise the day of small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the word begin. This is found in the New Living Translation. 
In conclusion, my dear friends, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, God gave us the mandate to have dominion, to rule, to subdue the earth. That mandate has not changed and Jesus reaffirmed it with his victory at the cross. You must see yourself through God's word as the light of the world, the salt of the earth and someone who is a positive change agent in our world. In this light, I would like you to attempt this home play and showcase yourself as a positive change agent in the kingdom of God. You know what you do? You write down two or three things that you feel you can do to help someone or people in the world around you, especially in this time when a lot of people seem to be discouraged around us. You could do something as simple as having a drawing or a piece of artwork or writing poetry or a song, and then you have a scripture embedded somewhere in it to encourage people. Start doing the things you've written down Try out the ones you can engage in safely and let's hear your feedback. So when we see you again, God bless you. What a wonderful time. I hope you had a good time. So if you have questions about this topic and any other topic that we've handled or you have questions in your hearts, you're going to find numbers here on the screen. I want you to write down those numbers. Call the number if you can. Send an SMS, send a Telegram message, send a WhatsApp message. Whichever question you have in your heart, I want you to know that we are willing to answer them. We are willing to walk this process with you in your formative years. Also, we'd like you to join our Telegram channel, which is also on the screen right now, and subscribe to our YouTube handle. So you always be you always be availed to the things that we are doing right here. Remember, there are quiet time for you for the week. Please follow this quiet time. We'll see you again very soon during the week. I need you to remember, I love you. But more importantly, God loves you and you are royalty. Go, conquer your world and be amazing. Bye-bye.